Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Costello. Um, I'm going to be doing the dividing radical expressions video today. Uh, first thing we have is a couple review problems. So what I want you to do is I actually want you to try these review problems on your own. These are both problems that we have done in unit one. So go ahead and pause the video and do them and then I will show you my work once you unpause. So go ahead and pause right now. So here's my work uh, on number one. All I did was draw what that line looks like if I was gonna graph it on a actual coordinate grid and said my domain was all real numbers because both those arrows are pointing left and right. So those X's are going on forever in both directions. Then your range is just gonna be Y equals five because the only Y value for that whole line is just five. There's no other Y values, so you can just put Y equals five. Problem number two wants me to multiply x minus one uh, by itself three times. So right here, I did two times, okay, just to kind of make things a little easier for myself. And I got this right here when I only did it two times. Then I added uh, a third one because that's kind of how I like to break it down. I know a lot of you guys like to do it that way too. Then the green was after I multiplied those two and then the purple should be your answer. So. Those were the two warm up ones. Now let's talk about dividing the radical expressions. So in radical world, you cannot have a radical in the denominator. It's no go. So, um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about what you need, the steps you need to do to divide a radical expression. So first thing I tell uh, my students to do is to split the radical Um, on top and bottom or numerator denominator okay however you want to write this these are your notes second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna simplify by factoring and that's both of them that's the top and the bottom then Third thing, uh, we can reduce the numbers that are outside the fraction, so, or sorry, not the fraction, outside the radical. Okay, so reduce outside numbers in the fraction. So those are going to be our three steps, and I'm going to go through those as we do some examples. Now, this is what I was talking about when I got to the box. In radical world, you can't have a radical on the denominator, okay? So no radicals in denominator, okay, or in the denominator. So what we have to do is we have to do what's called rationalizing. So when you rationalize, you are multiplying that radical by itself because then it'll go away. Okay, so step one, multiply top and bottom by the square root. Okay. And then um, step number two is just to repeat if you have a cube root or a cube root. So that's pretty much all we're doing today. So we do have a bunch of problems. So I'm gonna go through some of them with you. Some of them you guys are gonna do on your own. So let's look at number one. Number one follows that first set where I said, okay, here's all your steps. So there's one radical. When I teach this in algebra one, I have them split it up. So square root nine over square root four. So the top has a square root, the bottom has a square root. Okay, uh, nine is a perfect square, right? Square root of nine is three and square root of four is two. So this would be my answer on number one. Pretty short and sweet on that one, OK? 
Okay. I didn't really show the whole uh, breakdown because they were perfect squares and we know our perfect squares. And I'm going to show some factoring in this one. Okay. In number two, these guys are already broken down. Or sorry, the radicals already split. I'm going to break them down though to see if I can uh, take out any perfect squares. So 18 is 9 times 2. And I know that 9 is a perfect square, right? 9 is 3 and 3. So the threes are gonna come out and the two is gonna stay in just on the top. So I'm gonna write that, three, radical two. On the bottom, 81 is a perfect square, right? 81 is nine and nine. Don't go further than that, you don't need to. Like you already found the perfect squares. I see people a lot of times going like three times, three times, three times, three, don't do that, okay? So um, the nines come out and there's nothing left in the radical. So you are good with that. Now let's look at the outside numbers. When I say outside numbers, I'm talking about things that aren't inside the radical. So the three and the nine, we can reduce those, okay? So the three, um, they can both be divided by three. This is gonna become a one. This is gonna become a three, just like that. So one radical two over three. You don't have to write the root one. You could also just write it as radical two, like that, over three. Okay, number three. So there's a couple ways to do number three. What I would do is I would start breaking down that 32. Okay, 32 is 16 times two. And then 16 breaks down to four and four. So those guys are definitely gonna come out. All right, so I have four on top, radical two. Now on the bottom, I can't break down that two, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. Remember at the beginning of the notes, I said, hey, no radicals um, on the bottom, okay? So we have to multiply, we have to rationalize that denominator. We're gonna multiply by square root two over square root two. When you do that, you're just left with what's underneath the radical. So on top, like you have your four, but then you also have two because the twos, right here, this is now a group of two, so they're gonna come out. So four times two all over, same thing here, right? These guys are just gonna come out also. Okay, you might have already done four times two is eight over two, awesome. If not, you can also just reduce these guys right here and end up with four as your answer, right? Pretty, pretty easy. All right. Um, four and five are cube roots, but I want you guys to go ahead and try them. Um, this time you need groups of three, not groups of two. So I just wanna see how you do. So go ahead and pause your video and try these. So this was my work on number four. I split up the radical. I, uh, one is a perfect cube and a lot of you guys forget about that, but one is a perfect cube, so that one worked. And then 27 is also a perfect cubed, cube, so the threes broke out also. So there were there's no rationalizing that needed to happen. So that one was good to go. I will do number five with you just so you do get a cube root one. Um, and then we'll kind of do some other practices. Cool. So 128, let's break this guy down. 128 is 64 times 2. 64 is a perfect cube. Okay, it's 4 cubed. So I know there's going to be three fours right here, which is awesome, right? Everything is going to break out. So the fours are going to break out. And there's radical 2 or cube root of 2. Okay, make sure that you have this cubed right here. That's gonna be really important. Okay, I know your um, your other teachers will mark you down if you don't put that in there, if it's a cube root problem. So make sure you got that there. Eight, okay, eight is a perfect cube, right? Two, two, two. So everybody, everything comes out on the bottom. Okay, so, so I just have a whole number two on the bottom. Now I can reduce those outside numbers. Four and two, four can be divided by two. Four divided by two is two, and then two divided by two is one. So I actually got rid of that fraction. 
So my answer is going to be two cubed root of two. See how I almost forgot to put that cubed root in there? You need to clarify that it's a cubed root. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is do six and seven on your own. I definitely think you could do these one, six and seven on your own. So pause your video, do six and seven, and then when you unpause, the answers will be there. So this is my work on number six, number seven. If you didn't get that or you're not really sure how I did something, you sh can always ask tomorrow in class. You can ask your teacher. So I'm gonna go ahead and do number eight, but those are, those are the steps I took on six and seven. So I didn't have you do number eight because number eight is the first time that we are seeing a cube root in our denominator. Now there's no factoring that needs to happen because five is on top by itself, like it's fine. And then on the bottom you have cube root of two. Well, cube root of two, uh, there's, you know, the two isn't gonna go anywhere. So to rationalize this one, we have to multiply the top and the bottom, sorry, by cube root two over cube root two, but that's only two twos. We need three, so we're gonna do it one more time, okay? So one more time. Sweet. Okay, what happens on top is the five stays outside because it's an outside number. The twos are both inside numbers, so those guys are gonna get multiplied together and stay in the cube root. So two times two is four over, and then on the bottom, we have one, two, three twos, so they're going to come out. Now I can't uh, get a group of three from the four, so that's good, and I also can't divide five and two, so that's as simplified as it can be. Okay, so this is gonna be your answer on number eight. Okay, number nine. All right, so let's split up that radical. So cubed root 11 over cubed root of four. So there's a couple ways to do this one. If you think about uh, four, right? Four is two times two. So I already have two twos. Okay. So you could shortcut this and multiply it by just a cube root two. That's totally fine, but if you don't wanna do that, you can just multiply by cube root four twice. It's just gonna save you some time simplifying. Okay, and I show you this because I think maybe a lot of you guys will go, oh yeah, I, I connect with that. Because if I do that, look, now I have one, two, three twos. Here on top, I'm just gonna multiply the 11 and the two to get 22. So I have cube root 22 over and then just two. Okay. You would still get that if you decided to rationalize by multiplying by cube root of four. There's just gonna be a ton of twos that you have to take out later. So um, just warning you on that one, I feel like that's a shortcut. If you have questions on that, you can ask me or you can ask your teacher in class tomorrow. I am gonna pause again. I'm gonna let you guys do 10 and 11 and then I'm gonna show you one more, or two more types of problems and then we will be good to go on this video. So pause your video, try 10 and 11. So this is my work for 10 and 11. I do realize on 11, when you factor the bottom, I realize there's an outside number and that square root seven. Uh, and you, I reduce later, but you can reduce that whenever you want. You could totally reduce before you rationalize. It's, it's totally your call. Again, if you have questions, ask your teacher or ask me tomorrow in class. Okay, so we have three more to do, and I am gonna do all of these with you guys. So, um, on number 12, I realize there is a radical in the denominator, but let's break down the numerator first just to see what happens, okay? See if we, see what, uh, if we need to rationalize. So, 50, 50 is five and 10. Okay, and then I can definitely get another five from the 10. 
So two fives are going to come out, and the two is going to be left in the radical. Then on the bottom, I'm going to have five and then square root three. So this is a good example of why, like it might have been a good idea to wait to rationalize because I can cancel these fives right away. And that's one step that I don't have to do later. I do still have to rationalize though, um, because I have square root two on top and square root three on the bottom. So I am gonna multiply square root three over square root three. On top, when you multiply two radicals, remember that number just goes in one, so two times three is six, so square root six over, and then on the bottom, the radicals cancel each other out, so you just have three right here. So the last two problems have something that we haven't seen before. We have on the bottom an expression. We have radical three plus one. Now, just the three is in the radical. You can't just multiply the top and the bottom by the radical three. And the reason why is on the bottom, you would have to distribute. And that would get rid of it here, but not here with the plus one, okay? So what we have to do is we have to multiply by something called the conjugate, okay? The conjugate is the same expression, but with a different middle sign, the opposite middle sign. So instead of adding one, I'm going to subtract one on each side like that, okay? So um, I did, when I do that, it's kind of like when you multiply like difference of squares and the middle terms go away, okay? So the only thing that you really got to multiply are like these two and these two, okay? Because if, I mean, you can, if you really want to multiply like the one in the square root three, you can. And if you want to multiply the negative one in the square root three, but me, just by me saying that, I hope you realize like, oh yeah, those are going to cancel. So um, that's usually how I show multiplying by the conjugate. On top, you do have to distribute that four to everything. Okay, so the top is going to say 4 square root 3 minus 4 over square root 3 uh, times square root 3 is just 3. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Look, no radical, okay? Now let's simplify, okay? So the top is good. 4 square root 3 minus 4 all over 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I am allowed to reduce the outside numbers if every single thing outside number can be divided by the same number. So I have four, four, and two, okay? All of those can be divided by two. So uh, four divided by two is two, four divided by two is two, and two divided by two is one. So it looks like I have two, whoa, sorry, uh, two square root three minus two. Okay. Yes, it's over one, but we don't really need to put that. All right, I have one more, and then we are going to be done for today. Another conjugate one. Okay, this time there is a radical in the numerator, so it's going to make the conjugate look a little different, but it's still the same process. So I'm going to multiply by the, um, the conjugate, so change the middle sign, so one plus square root six, one plus square root six. Remember on top to distribute that square root two. Okay, so distribute here. So two times one is square, or sorry, square root two times one is square root two. Square root two times that six, you are gonna add, and let's make that a 12, because you do need to multiply those guys together. Um, we'll simplify in a second. On the bottom, remember you are just multiplying the first and the last with the conjugate first times last. So one times one is just one. And then minus square root six times square root six is just six. Now we have some simplifying to do. On top, we do need to factor to see if we get the same number underneath the radical and we can add. So 12 is four times three, and 
the four breaks down to two times two. So twos are gonna come out, three is gonna stay in. So on top right now, it looks like square root two plus two square root three all over, and then one minus six is negative five. Now I don't really mind if the negative stays on the bottom with the five, or if you bring it to the front, like that's totally fine, but don't put it on top unless you wanna to, uh, completely distribute it, okay, your call. So that's it for day three. If you have any questions, please ask them in class tomorrow. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.